Hello, dear ones, Father Peter John coming to you from All Saints Orthodox Church in Bloomington, Indiana. Christ is in our midst. This week, we are celebrating St. Patrick, the equal of the apostles and enlightener of Ireland. St. Patrick is, of course, an Orthodox saint. He is an Orthodox bishop, and we celebrate him in the Orthodox Church. Maybe not with green beer, green rivers, and shamrocks, but I do want to tell you a couple of things about his life that you may find helpful and fascinating. First of all, St. Patrick was um, the grandson of an Orthodox Christian priest. Uh, he was raised in and around the faith uh, and was brought to Ireland by pirates who abducted him when he was 16 years old. Uh, when he was brought to Ireland, he was sold as a slave he lived in this slavery for six years. He um, worked, uh, according to his own word, he says he was a sheep herder. Some counts say that he herded pigs. In any case, he worked on a mountainside and in the woods, uh, the forest, it says, and, and he was a herder. And so um, it was during this time that he turned to God and truly began to pray to God from his heart. While he was there, he, uh, over these six years, learned the Irish language, and eventually was given the opportunity by God to escape. He returned to his parents, then went to a monastery, was ultimately ordained a bishop, and returned to Ireland as a missionary, the enlightener of Ireland, the uh, equal to the apostles. Now, um, just a couple of things I want to highlight. Number one, St. Patrick, it says that he was, uh, while he was raised in, in a Christian home, that it wasn't until his captivity that he was truly seeking Christ with his whole heart. So what does that teach us? Well, first of all, um, it should teach us that, you know, God is with us wherever we are, and in our suffering, God is there, and God desires us to reach out to him. God desires that all men would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And sometimes it's in our darkest hours. Sometimes it's in isolation or captivity, uh, or depression, or grief, or uh, unemployment, uh, or could even be a, a, a shutdown, right? Sometimes it's in those hours that we truly seek God with our heart in a way that we are able to find him and to connect with him. Um, incidentally, right now in our parish, we have something like 50 catechumens and inquirers uh, they came out of the woodwork, you know, uh, post-pandemic shutdown. They, people, I think, during the time of the shutdown, um, they had more time to research, uh, to pray, to think, to contemplate. Life slowed down to the point that they were able to say, well, I, what are some things I'm not usually doing? I think I want to do those things now. And, and I think one of those was researching faith, religion, church, God, maybe reading the Bible. So we're grateful for that. And we hear that that is happening at Orthodox churches all over the country. Um, the other thing I want to point out about St. Patrick's life is uh, that, you know, he, while he was in this captivity, he learned the Irish language, which then served him later as a missionary to Ireland. Think about that for a minute. Uh, because of his captivity, he was being equipped to bring the gospel to the people of Ireland later in life. God knows what we need. God knows where we are. God desires that we would seek him and be saved. And uh, St. Patrick's life is just a beautiful example of how God prepares and equips uh, his, his servants, his ambassadors, to assist in the saving of other people. So that's what I wanted to point out. Um, I hope and pray that your St. Patrick's Day is filled with joy and grace, that you'll remember to ask this dear saint to pray for us, uh, that we may have boldness exhibited uh, by him, like exhibited, exhibited by him. And it, one other thing, it is said that St. Patrick, when he arrived in Ireland, uh, that there was paganism only found everywhere, and that by the time he reposed in the Lord, that there was Christianity on every corner. What a testament to this dear man's devotion to Christ and the church. Christ is in our midst. He is and ever shall be.